Greetings, unsettled souls, and uh, welcome to News from the Science Front, part of the Saturday edition here at the Media Speaks, and we're going to soar right into it. This is from Space.com, and uh, the article was really annoying because it had this uh, video that starts playing right away. It's the kind of thing that makes me not want to go back, so you've been warned before I read this. bus size asteroid buzzes Earth comes closer than the moon. Well, that would be bus-sized. They also write very good. A small asteroid about the size of a city bus zipped by Earth at a little range closer than the moon early Saturday, which was May 3rd when this was written, but posed no threat to our planet. The newly discovered asteroid 2014 HL-129 came within 160,000 miles of Earth when it made its closest approach on Saturday morning which is close enough to pass between the planet and the orbit of the moon. Hey, that's closer than Mitt Romney got to the White House. The average distance between the Earth and moon is about 238,855 miles. It says that you can watch an animation of the asteroid uh, 2014 HN129's orbit. Yeah, it gives you no choice. Around the sun and on space.com, the asteroid is about 25 feet wide, according to NASA's Asteroid Watch Project, and it's based at the agency's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, Cali. It made its closest approach to Earth at 4.13 a.m. EDT. Um, as Saturday's close shave by asteroid 2014 HL-129 came just days after its discovery on Wednesday, April the 28th by astronomers with the Mount Lemmon survey team, according to an alert by the Minor Planet Center, an arm of the International Astronomical Union that chronicles asteroid discoveries. Uh, that's alarming, because um, missing an asteroid of that size, if it was to hit, say, New York City or Moscow, would create uh, would, uh, death of millions, death of millions. The cloud that would go into the atmosphere, would kill hundreds, it would destroy farming communities, it would be a mess. Uh, the Mount Lemmon survey team scans the night sky with a telescope and the Stewart Observatory atop Mount Lemmon in Arizona's Catalina Mountains. NASA scientists, it says, and researchers around the world constantly monitor the sky for potentially dangerous asteroids that could pose a risk of impacting the Earth. Uh, this is very, very interesting, and I can tell you why. How much money do we spend to make sure we can kill each other? How much money do we spend making sure our president can go to Hawaii? How much money do we spend as a people, as a world, for that matter, for you uh, New World Order worshipers? If something like this hits us, Think about all the millions. I mean, we, we, can, we can do a better job of watching the skies around us than we do. It's just that we don't use our money wisely. Um, it says a basic rock quiz here. Well, I'm not going to go through all these. But anyway, go ahead and take the rock quiz. It's at space.com if you can deal with their pop-ups. Lastly, RIA Novosti, Russia to begin moon coloniz colonization in a 2030 report. Colonization. Why am I having trouble saying that? Um, Russia has drafted a program for colonization of the moon and plans to send the first expeditions to build a permanent lunar base in 2030. The Russian Izvestia Daily said Thursday, citing an official document. Now, again, people laughed at uh, Mitt, Ro uh, not Mitt Romney, uh, Newt Gingrich, when he uh, gave this. And I said at the time that while uh, Newt was in no danger of ever getting my vote, highlight that, that I didn't think he was nuts for this. And um, I think it needs to be done. Colonizing the moon, getting minerals off the moon, yes, yes, of course. Do I believe that man is warming the planet? No. But would we be better off if we weren't mining this out of our planet and destroying our environment in other ways? Of course we would. It says the moon is a space object for the future exploration by terrestrial civilization and a geopolitical competition for the moon's natural resources may begin in the 21st century, said a report on a potential lunar program prepared by the Russian Academy of Sciences, the, Ro the Ro Roscosmos Space Agency, and Moscow State University. The program aims to build an inhabited moon base and testing ground by the middle of the century, which would allow mineral extraction on Earth only as natural satellite. Uh, and again, um, 
if we lived in a, on a planet that had many moons, uh, perhaps this would be, uh, I don't want to say less urgent, but we got one shot at this. Let's make it happen, clearly. The project calls on developing a range of long-distance space technology to ensure the country can explore the moon independently from foreign partners. Earlier proposals for lunar exploration focused on strong international cooperation, as it is believed no single country can afford interplanetary projects on its own. Pause. Well, you know what this is going to do. First of all, America is going to have to go it alone when we do this, because we've managed to piss off the Russians by uh, helping the Ukraine elect Nazis. Um, am I a Putin fan? Hell no. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. But I will say this. Um, this is going to hurt the scientists, and it's going to hurt the science as a whole, and it's going to damage the science community. Why? Because the U.S. and Russia, together, seem to have an ability to work well when it comes to space things. This is just going to increase the likelihood that it's going to cost even more and make this more, uh, make this less likely to happen. How's that? Russia will plan separate three or four year long lunar projects for the next 16 years, according to the plan. The first four will take place between 2016 and 2025 and will focus on defining the physical and chemical composition of the moon's south pole, where the future base will be sited. Space round trips are scheduled for 2028 through 30 and manned lunar exploration by 2030 to 40. The first stage will cost the government 28.5 billion rubles, which is $800 million, as Vestia said. Well, it wouldn't cost so much if you'd have some American help. Previous lunar expeditions, which started with the USSR's lunar program in 1959 and the U.S. landing the first man on the moon ten years later, discovered aluminum, iron, titanium, rare earths, and other minerals. So, friends, Russians are going to do it if they have to do it alone. Meanwhile, we're electing Nazis to the Ukraine. You are listening to News from the Science Front. I'm Sam I.B. Deganji of The Correct Views, and we are back to the Saturday edition. Guys, when you talk entertainment, don't you dare not mention that new Judas Priest single. Out.